So a strange voice from deep space, a mysterious object named the Three Eye Atlas has just sent a signal aimed directly at planet Earth. So is it a cosmic coincidence or is it the first whisper from something that is not from this world? Our next story explains as to what this radio signal is which has created the buzz on the internet. On October 24th, astronomers tuned the Meerkat radio telescope for a gamble. The radio telescope in South Africa's Karoo Desert detected what may be the first microwave whisper from an interstellar object. The astronomers wanted answers from interstellar darkness. What they caught was beyond expectation. On November 14, astronomers documented an event that no known natural comet has ever exhibited, a precisely tuned narrowband absorption signature from 3i Atlas at 1665 and 1667 MHz. The twin frequencies of the 18 centimeter OH microwave transition long regarded in SETI circles as a potential interstellar communication channel. These were not the broad spectrum stochastic emissions normally produced by volatile sublimation or solar heating. They were thin, clean, and unwavering. Radio fingerprints that emerged exactly where no one expected them, with a precision that contradicted the chaotic physics of a typical cometary coma. The discovery ignited immediate debate. Chemical explanations were proposed, rotational forcing was reconsidered, and instrument error was briefly entertained before being ruled out. As data accumulated, the signal's consistency undermined every conventional hypothesis. A natural object was speaking in unnaturally narrow lines. Sixteen days later, on November 30, 2025, an equally baffling anomaly surfaced, this time not as a radio signature, but as visible evidence of a repeating physical structure. Newly processed imagery revealed a jet on 3i Atlas brightening and dimming in a rhythmic cadence. The timing aligned with a 16.16-hour cycle, prompting Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb to describe it as a heartbeat a metaphor that instantly seized public imagination. Analysts initially assumed the periodicity originated from the comet's rotation. However, further analysis overturned that assumption. The nucleus was far too dim to produce the observed amplitude, and its rotational signature, such as it was, could not account for the jet's synchronized pulses. The modulation originated within the jet itself, as though mass were being expelled on a regulated timer. A second anomaly now stood beside the first, unrelated in mechanism, yet similar in implication. One was electromagnetic, the other mechanical. Both demonstrated regularity where randomness should reign. Together, the anomalies suggested a pattern forming beneath the surface of the data. The radio absorption and the pulsing jet behaved like independent signals from a shared system, different channels of a process that ordinary comet physics struggled to explain. Unsettling questions circulated more rapidly than researchers could answer them. If the radio lines were truly narrow band and the jet truly rhythmic, the phenomena might point toward internal structuring or coordinated venting. No model of natural outgassing produced such sharp periodicity, especially for an interstellar object whose composition already deviated from expectations. 3i Atlas began to resemble not merely an unusual comet, but a system exhibiting synchronized behavior in multiple domains. Into this growing debate entered a third layer of complexity, one originating from NASA's own archives rather than external telescopes. A week after the agency released a faint, unimpressive high-rise smear of 3i Atlas, a private research collective called Earth Exists examined the raw planetary data system files and found a story that diverged sharply from the official explanation. Metadata revealed that HiRISE had actually performed a full 14-bit multispectral capture, red, NIR, and blue-green, each executed flawlessly with no errors, memory faults, or telemetry gaps, yet none of these high-resolution channels appeared in the public archive. Only a single downsampled 8-bit grayscale strip remained, while placeholders and missing file markers indicated the unreleased exposures once existed.
the headers confirmed all channels fired successfully, making the degraded public image not a product of technical limitation, but of selective curation, leaving behind a sanitized smear in place of the detailed structural and thermal information the instrument had truly recorded. The implications of that discrepancy deepened rapidly as researchers re-evaluated the broader data landscape surrounding 3i Atlas. With the discovery of new radio signals and heartbeat-like jet pulses already challenging assumptions about 3i Atlas, the emergence of additional anomalies shifted the discussion from isolated oddities to a possible underlying pattern. Analysts began comparing datasets collected across different instruments, wavelengths, and observatories, searching for connections that might explain why an interstellar visitor was exhibiting behaviors never before seen in natural comets. What emerged from those comparisons was a growing suspicion that the object's unusual features were not random deviations, but components of a synchronized process. The first sign of coordination came from the timing. The narrow band absorption lines at 1665 and 1667 megahertz did not appear continuously. Instead, they surfaced intermittently in episodes that clustered around periods of heightened optical activity. Observatories reported that radio detections tended to coincide with phases when 3i Atlas's jet activity reached peak brightness, a relationship that traditional comet models struggled to account for. In a typical comet, outgassing behaves erratically, influenced by random pockets of volatiles, thermal stress, or surface fracturing. Yet here, jet pulses followed a stable 16.16-hour cycle, while radio signatures reappeared in patterns correlated with that rhythm. The alignment suggested a shared driver, something that modulated energy release in both the mechanical and electromagnetic domains. Further analysis of light curves reinforced the impression of deliberate timing. As telescopes tracked the jet pulses, the brightness shifts behaved less like organic eruptions and more like periodic emissions. Even minor fluctuations in solar heating or the comet's orientation should have disrupted the cycle, but the pulse remained consistent across multiple observation windows. Such regularity pushed researchers to consider whether internal structures or resonant processes might be at work, mechanisms capable of regulating venting with near-mechanical precision. Some proposed that the nucleus might host deep chambers that filled and emptied in repeating cycles, though this required an unprecedented degree of stability for a fragment of interstellar ice. On the radio side, the narrow-band absorption lines maintained their own mystery. Unlike broadband emissions, typical of cometary activity, these lines appeared as sharp, distinct notches in the spectrum, highly specific frequencies associated with the OH radical. Although natural processes can produce OH emissions, the precision of these features challenged conventional explanations. Models attempting to replicate the lines required finely tuned environmental conditions that coincidentally aligned with the observed timing of the jet pulses. As simulations struggled to capture the full behavior, some researchers suggested that a coordinated process inside the comet might be selectively exciting specific molecules, creating emissions or absorptions that mimicked patterns traditionally reserved for communication channels. When plotted together, the two phenomena, radio and optical, demonstrated a degree of synchronization that pushed speculation into new territory. Analysts observed that the strongest radio signals appeared during or just after peaks in jet brightness, as though both were outputs of a larger oscillating system. Even minor delays between the phenomena exhibited consistent offsets, indicating the possibility of a cause and effect relationship rather than random coincidence. Such coordination had no precedent in comet studies, especially for objects traveling from beyond the solar system with unknown provenance. Some voices within the scientific community urged caution, pointing out that unfamiliar behavior might arise from the comet's interstellar origins. A world formed around a distant star with different chemical ratios, pressure conditions, or radiation exposure might develop volatile distributions or structural properties unlike anything cataloged in local comets. 
It was plausible, they argued, that the heartbeat pattern represented a form of thermal relaxation cycle unique to interstellar ices, or that the narrow band signatures emerged from exotic outgassing environments never before observed. Yet such interpretations required assuming a combination of rare processes occurring simultaneously in a manner that happened to produce striking regularity. Others proposed mechanisms grounded in physics but leaning toward the extraordinary. One hypothesis suggested that the nucleus might contain crystalline structures capable of storing and releasing energy in periodic bursts, creating both rhythmic jets and momentary excitation of molecular species responsible for the radio lines. Another suggested that the comet's rotation might interact with internal voids or fissures in a way that created resonant cycles of pressure buildup and release. These frameworks provided interesting possibilities, but still left gaps in explaining why the rhythm persisted so precisely, even as external conditions changed. As the anomaly gained attention, researchers began to look more closely at the morphology of the coma itself. High-resolution images from ground-based observatories and space telescopes revealed asymmetries in brightness and structure that did not map cleanly onto solar heating models. Jets appeared clustered in specific regions rather than distributed randomly across the nucleus. Some exhibited unusual collimation, forming narrow, focused streams rather than broad plumes. This directional behavior further strained natural explanations, as typical cometary jets diffuse rapidly unless guided by structural constraints. The tightness of these streams suggested channels or pathways that maintained shape and direction across multiple pulse cycles. Spectral analysis added another layer to the equation. 3i Atlas displayed an unexpectedly high concentration of carbon dioxide compared to most known comets, a composition that influenced thermal behavior and outgassing dynamics. CO2 sublimates at lower temperatures than water ice, potentially creating jet activity at greater distances from the sun. But this alone could not account for the perfect periodicity of the pulses, nor could it explain the narrow band radio signatures. Instead, the unusual chemistry became another piece of a puzzle that seemed to resist simple classification. Ultimately, the conversation surrounding 3i Atlas settled into two broad camps. One maintained that the anomalies reflected natural processes amplified by the object's interstellar origins. The other argued that the comet's patterns implied an underlying coordination that natural mechanisms were unlikely to produce. Neither side could claim definitive evidence, but both recognized that the convergence of radio precision, optical rhythm, and structural irregularity presented an unprecedented scientific challenge.